Hi, I'm Kendra Little from SQLWorkbooks.com. Recently, I gave my first demo ever on SQL Server running on a Docker container on my Mac. And shortly afterwards, I got a question from someone who's like, hey, you know, I'm just wondering, why would I want to run SQL Server in a Docker container and what's that good for? So I wanted to give a quick demo of exactly how long it takes to set up SQL Server on Docker and also just talk through my own personal use case and why I think this is really, really cool. The reason that I'm so excited about the ability for me to use SQL Server in Docker on my little Mac laptop is that it's really quick and easy to just throw up an instance. And that includes grabbing the latest version of the SQL Server instance and setting up the whole Docker container. And that's really exciting because sometimes you really just want a really quick environment to do quick and dirty tests in. This is something that I actually want all the time. I like to teach people SQL Server and I want them to be able to play around with the tests and learn the concepts in a really safe, private, cheap environment, right? Just throw up a SQL Server instance and start checking things out and learning it. And there's gonna be cool stuff that you come up with in there. There's gonna be code and patterns that you want to deploy to the real world. And you wanna be able to grab them out of there and then move them into a more legitimate, more permanent environment. But for this sandbox where you're just learning and playing around, you don't want that to necessarily be something special that you have to keep safe. You want it to be something that it's okay if you totally trash it and then it's just really easy to set up a new clean one. You want it to be really safe and also really disposable. And that's why I love this ability so much. So what I'm gonna do is I've got Docker running on my little MacBook Pro. And what I'm gonna do is go into the preferences and I'm gonna click on the little bomb. There's a little reset bomb on Docker for Mac. And I'm gonna just click remove all data. So it's getting rid of all of my Docker containers and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and click delete. And what I'm gonna do is start my SQL Server Docker instance from scratch. So here comes my Docker back and Docker is starting, Docker starting up. So I'm gonna let it start up and I'm gonna open up my terminal on my Mac and I'm gonna grab some commands here. Now, none of the stuff that I'm gonna do here is, <laughs> is any magic that I figured out myself. Uh, Aaron Bertrand put up some great instructions on how to set up Docker on a Mac on the Century One blog. And I took a lot of the info that I'm showing you today from Aaron's instructions. I'm just doing a little demo of it. So I'm gonna paste in some code and I'm saying Docker pull Microsoft, Microsoft SQL Server on Linux. And I'm running this pull command to get the latest stuff down. And my terminal shows, hey, I'm downloading all the goodies and it's really pretty fast. It doesn't have a ton to download for this build. It is pretty small and dare I say nimble. So once this download is complete, what I'm gonna run is a Docker command to use the files that I've downloaded to set up my little SQL server in a container. Right now it's pulled all the info, it is extracting the goodies for me. It's downloaded everything, it's just extracting everything out to make it ready for me to use. And there we go, it has grabbed my image and I'm ready to go. So I'm now gonna paste in my next command where I'm saying docker run. And this is a lot of what Aaron's blog post helped me uh, set up in here. I'm accepting the Eula, the Eula the end user license agreement. I'm using a really crappy password and there we go. It's done already. If I wanna see my stuff, I can run the command docker ps and I get a little information there that my container has been up for 11 seconds at the time I ran that command. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a little VM that I have running that's running now my virtual machine it's totally separate. And the reason that I'm getting this virtual machine is just that I wanna to connect to my container from 
Management Studio installed in Windows. So I'm gonna open up SQL Server Management Studio on a VM that's running Windows, and I wanna to connect to my little container. Now, I figured out, based on Aaron's blog post, I figured out how to get the IP address based on my network settings on my laptop, and I can now connect on over to my uh, Docker running SQL Server version 14.0.800.90, and I can restore databases to this. I can play around with all sorts of stuff. Now, I haven't set up anything to persist databases on this thing. So anything I do in here, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I save the scripts or if I update data in a database that I back it up because this instance is disposable but it's super quick and easy to set up. It's easy to access and it's also really easy whenever I want to just throw everything away and start from scratch. And I love that ability to have a safe place to play around, but it doesn't matter if I light it on fire. It's easy enough to get a new one. So that's a quick introduction to exactly how easy it is to set up Docker on the Mac. I'll include a link to Aaron's setup scripts along with a couple more links to get you going. And I hope you have as much fun with this as I've had. I'm Kendra Little from sequelworkbooks.com. Thanks for joining me.